So I want you all to think back to our story this morning and think of maybe a time when you were free from making mistakes. Perhaps it was a school paper that you received 100% on or a project at work where you were able to execute everything perfectly, where everything aligned itself just so. That when all was said and done and you looked back at the process, there was nothing that you would have changed. Have you ever been so satisfied with the results of your efforts that you believed there was no room for improvement? Actual question, yes? No, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> oh, Lisa says once, once upon a time. <laughs> And yet there is this concept of perfectionism in our society that constantly calls us to be better, calls us to strive for more, and urges us on to the point of breaking. Why do we have this need for perfection? And how will we ever give ourselves a break from its constant seeking? While writing the thesis for a master's in leadership studies, I took a class in writing and research. The professor assigned a short essay in the first few days of class by Anne Lamont called Shitty First Drafts. In it, Lamont states, people tend to look at successful writers who are getting their books published and maybe even doing well financially and think that they sit down at their desks every morning feeling like a million dollars, feeling great about who they are and how much talent they have and what a great story they have to tell, that they take a few deep breaths push back their sleeves, roll their neck a couple of times to get out all of the kinks and dive in, typing fully formed passages as fast as a court reporter. But this is just a fantasy of the uninitiated. Lamont goes on to say, for me and for most writers that I know, writing is not rapturous. In fact, the only way we can get anything written at all is to give ourselves permission to write really, really shitty first drafts. How do we give ourselves permission to have shitty first drafts? Is there room in our world for striving, in our world of striving for perfection to be okay with and to actually enjoy the processes of first steps, first drafts, fumbling around without understanding how things work and how to manage everything. How do we get over the idea of perfection from the onset of our to-do list, at the onset of our careers, our goals, our achievements? How do we get over the idea of perfectionism in its entirety? Another concept that has been made popular in modern culture comes from the book Outliers, The Story of Success. In this book, author Malcolm Gladwell claims that, uh, that the 10,000 hour rule is the key to achieving world-class expertise in any skill. If only we were able to practice our skill for 10,000 hours, then perhaps we could achieve this notion of perfection, much like the Beatles, who had become becoming one of the most well-known and most successful rock groups in the world, or Bill Gates becoming one of the richest people in the world. It seems pretty manageable. In any ways, practice makes perfect, doesn't it? 10,000 hours works out to approximately 20 hours per week for 10 years. Even if you couldn't commit 20 hours per week, I'm certain that I knit for somewhere between seven or eight hours a week, maybe even 10 hours a week. 
and I started knitting 17 years ago. So I'm already halfway to perfection, halfway to achieving world-class expertise. The problem with this concept, as has been pointed out by many of Malcolm's critics, is that often when we are learning our skills, things shift, rules will change, and concepts will develop. In other words, if I spent the last 17 years only knitting dishcloths, which was the first thing that I learned to knit, then I would become a world-class knitter of dishcloths. But I started knitting scarves and socks and sweaters, cables and lace and adding in different colors and trying different techniques, all to the point where I'm hardly never practicing my craft, but constantly in a state of learning and discovering, not really practicing. Who knows, maybe one day I will even start to design my own knitted pieces rather than using patterns. Whereas the rules of chess never really change and could likely be learned and mastered in a significantly shorter period of time, or perhaps how to ride a bike or solve a Rubik's cube all things that you can become that you can become really proficient at perhaps even a world class expert but this is because of the rules or the situation is stable and there doesn't need to be any entrepreneurial skills involved it's so much harder to become an expert at things when rules change or when the situation in which you must perform is new Perhaps somebody could be the best hockey player in the National League, but put them in a new situation like street hockey or change things up for them by putting them on a different hockey team. And then suddenly they are no longer the best hockey player. Perhaps it is not that we practice alone and achieve perfection, but when we practice with others, we can create something together that is better and perfection. I want to share a video clip with you all. Some people will probably recognize this clip, although others might not. It's a dance scene from a 1980s dance movie called Flashdance, where the young woman named Alex is encouraged to audition for a spot at a prestige dance school. This scene is the last scene in the movie. It's her audition. Now I apologize, there is one line in it and it is Spanish because that was the best video I could find. But basically all Alex says is sorry, may I start over? Please enjoy the clip.
Scusate, ricomincio. Sorry that the uh, picture was lagging. I don't know if people online had that same problem, but I really encourage you all to go home and watch this clip. In the 1980s, this movie was at the pinnacle. Some of the hype around the movie is that women wanted to be Alex and men wanted to date her. What you didn't see in this clip was that Alex worked as a welder during the daytimes, and she worked as a dancer in the night. She badly wanted to become a professional dancer, but she doesn't have any formal training. And she ends up spending the duration of the movie practicing night and day for this audition. And she aced it. A prime example of practice makes perfect. After all of her trials and tribulations, her stumbles and her nerves, Alex was able to perfect her audition. But does she really? It was release, revealed after the film had been released that it actually took four different actors to perform that dance scene. So Jessica Biel is the woman who plays Alex through the rest of this movie. And she has a dance double, a ballerina who did all of the dancing in all of the scenes throughout the movie. But this scene in particular required a gymnast to perform the great leap that happens near the middle of the dance. And then a fourth actor who was a male street performer that did the break dancing at the end. 
So through the magic of television, or in this case, a movie, we are able to see the spectacular feat of perfection. To go back to Anne Lamont's essay, Shitty First Drafts, she states, perfection is the voice of the oppressor, the enemy of the people. It will keep you cramped and insane your whole life. And it is the main obstacle between you and a shitty first draft. I think that perfectionism is based on the obsessive belief that if you are careful enough, hitting each stepping stone just right, you won't have to die. The truth is that you will die anyway, and that a lot of people who aren't even looking at their feet are going to do a whole lot better than you and have to have a lot more fun while they're doing it. If we go back to the story that I shared earlier this morning, we can see that perfection is something that will hold us back from attempting new things like skating on the park ice. where we feel frozen in a space and time and where risks are not being taken or fear of failure paralyzes us. We can attempt to walk down this path, spending all of our time practicing the one or two things that we might be able to get perfect and ignoring the rest. Or we could recognize that things can get better when we join in the crowd and challenge ourselves with others. Find a way to engage our interdependence and rely on others to help us make it through the tough parts. All throughout this morning, we have been reaching towards our interdependence to create something that is more than perfect. We have enjoyed music together. We have witnessed one another during times of strife and joy. We have come together as a community because we know that being in community and participating in the collective gatherings allows us reprieve from the struggles of the work week, the struggles of every day life, the struggles of holding it all together by ourselves. Being part of this community allows us to let go of the need for perfection and allows us to find peace in being together and creating something more. This morning, I hope that you are able to take that sense of peace back into the world. Remembering that you are interdependent in this community, following you and supporting you no matter where you go. I hope that it will allow you to let go of some of the needs within you to be perfect. Thank you.